Sorry, I have to uh, do some press uh, soon with uh, Ambassador Melania Mayorga, who used to be uh, Miss Universe El Salvador. And every time I've ever been in the press and I dress like a Bitcoiner, and then she dresses like she does, I, I'm like, I see the photos in the press and I'm like, oh my God, maybe I need to wear a dress next time. That's why I'm wearing a dress in Bitcoin comments. <laughs> You know, there was a period of time, like uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, and we've got Bitcoin. 
conferences, and there was a huge flood of new people in, and everybody was like, oh my god, what was it like to be in 2011 Bitcoin, and it seems like a different world. Well, you're going to have the same thing in like five years from now, people are like, oh my god, you were in El Salvador in 2023, what was it like then? So, I think that's where we are right now. Yeah, I'm fascinated. You know, my history goes and back to financial markets for 40 years now, 45 years, and you always look for mispricing in the markets, and it's very rare you, you find something like El Salvador that the market is so incredibly underpriced. Uh, I think the rating agencies are now catching on. They just rated, uh, raised the rating. The bond market has been uh, extraordinary for El Salvador. It's the best performing emerging market. Uh, that's institutional money. Uh, now we have what are, what's called the smart money. This is uh, the folks who are going to come in uh, and start developing more seriously uh, the infrastructure and the tourism and things like that. And then a year from now, we're going to have um, a line at LaGuardia trying to get on a plane to escape the shithole that is uh, the United States. Uh, and flee. <laughs> uh, we already have the, the migration numbers are already approaching reverse migration. They're very close now. We get more people are fleeing the U.S. to El Salvador than vice versa. And that, and so this is once that flips, I think that's escape velocity. That's how I would define it. I would also say that the reading, we were upgraded, El Salvador was upgraded yesterday by the S&P, but their reading is still total bullshit, and everybody in this room knows that. Like, there's no way this fucking country is not investment grade. We're all here investing, we're building, because we believe it's investment grade. So, it's bullshit, that rating agency. So investing in El Salvador, you mentioned that. What is the best way for Bitcoiners to invest in the country, invest in the people? Obviously, everything Bitcoin, everything pro Bitcoin, but what are you seeing being here, living in here? Okay, we have legal tender. What's the next step? What's the way that entrepreneurs and Bitcoin-focused entrepreneurs can invest in this country and accelerate that? Uh, we're building Renaissance 2.0, and that means everything. We need everything. We need, um, like I said, the best individuals, the best builders, the best you know, companies, the best artists, the best uh, thinkers, doers, like beers. We don't want plunders. We've locked them all up. We've kicked them out of the country. Uh, we don't have the corrupt anymore. Uh, all those shit pointers can go somewhere else. Uh, you know, with one of the, like Puerto Rico or something. Uh, we, we don't need them here, right? So it's, you, you just need to invest your time and your energy. And that includes just simply don't trust verify. Because if you're only, all of you here are verifying for your, the fact that you see what's in front of you and what you're experiencing here in El Salvador. Um, a lot of people outside El Salvador just read the press or read the online fund and they think it's, um, you know, that's all the investment they put into thinking whether or not they want to move there. They're like, no, I'm going to trust the mainstream media and I'm not going to move there or, or visit there. So just invest your time and energy and um, once you come here, uh, I, I've seen uh, quite a few people, like Lena, she came here to visit, and now she's saying, like, that's generally what happens. A lot of people come to visit, and they never leave. Yeah, I think the new Statue of Liberty is a volcano in El Salvador. <laughs> you know, this is, um, this is become the home of the brave, land of the free, or the land of the free, home of the brave. I'm, I've forgotten the, what's going on over there. The land mass wedge between Canada and Mexico, I forget sometimes. But, but this is really, the, the best investment is to come here. And, um, you know, we've been just in, um, for John over at Meet Premier Bitcoin, for example, he came here, and he's, Meet Premier Bitcoin is absolutely unbelievable. And he really built that from, from scratch. And that's the kind of opportunity anybody who comes here who's entrepreneurial has a good idea. And the country needs everything across the board. You know, anything you do that they want, they need. And that's the message. And I'll say something else about living in El Salvador is that, as was explained to me once by somebody, you know, if you go to Japan or you move to Japan, you, you never become Japanese. If you move to France, you really never become French. If you go to the U.S., there's a melting pot and you can become American. It's similar here in El Salvador. People love everyone moving here, and you, they embrace you as family. You become Salvador the second you eat your first pupusa. <laughs> Has that been your favorite 
favorite thing about moving here is just seeing Bitcoin adoption, but being a part of the community and seeing that the whole nation support you, or all the Bitcoiners here support you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the most important things, like I said, the metric that we look at is the number of Bitcoiners adopting El Salvador, and that's how we gauge how, whether or not we're succeeding in what we're doing. Uh, because all of the work we're doing, whether it's the education projects, whether it's you know, um, you know, providing the very simple, clear laws and regulations, or whether it's having the Bitcoin office, as as John Denny pointed out, like the fact that we have a Bitcoin office and we can call and uh, we can hear people's concerns. So the metric we look at is the number of companies moving here, and I know it's working, and I because I see the. The companies coming in, and Fold and Strike, for example, just announced they're moving in. We're going to have another few rounds of big announcements over the next few months of people coming here. I just heard that you know there was a gathering of some Bitcoin companies somewhere in the United States, and there was a half-day discussion with this gathering of Bitcoiners that um, what is their El Salvador plan? So that's what we want: is you need an El Salvador plan if you're want to be ser taken seriously in the Bitcoin space. And this that's a sign of that we're succeeding in what we're trying to do. Yeah, I would uh, pretty much concur with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's how well I've trained you. That's, that's our dinner conversation all night long. I mean, he just says, I pretty much concur with that. So with the embassy, with, with the regulatory clarity and everything else coming for Bitcoin in, in the U.S. with the ETF and everything of that sort, do you think that that's going to have a major impact here in the narrative for obviously Bitcoin, but then also, oh, El Salvador did do the right thing, we did not adopt this. Do you, or do you think it's relevant? Do you think that El Salvador needs the less to change your opinion or just keep marching forward? Uh, well, obviously President Bukele is a bit like a honey badger, you don't give a fuck, like, <laughs> like whatever they want to do. But like, yeah, we, you know, we always believed for quite a long time now, you know, Bitcoin is money, everything else is a shitcoin or a security, we'll call it, right? Um, but the US was saying that, you know, the regulators were saying that over and over and over, and all these people keep on demanding regulatory clarity. It's like, they're fucking telling you, like, it's a shitcoin, it's a scam, they know it. Like, everybody knows it. Um, so we just like, okay, let's just put it down on paper, because we, we realized, like, remember, of the US, the IMF, the, all these like international rating agencies, big banks were saying, El Salvador is going to fail, they're adopting Bitcoin, it's going to be a disaster, collapse, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what collapsed? All of those highly regulated entities out of New York City, which is like triply regulated inside the US. So you had all of those, you know, you had the SPF, you had Celsius, you had BlockFi, you had all that stuff happen in the US. It didn't happen here for a reason, because we were here and we kept this Bitcoin country. Yeah, I think it's becoming an irresistibly attractive place to, to come and to, and to move. You know, the Bitcoin aesthetic and the Bitcoin protocol, the Bitcoin philosophy at the core of the Bitcoin phenomenon includes many sociological and um, even psychological aspects. And I don't think it's a coincidence that after making Bitcoin legal tender, the country then went on a program to make El Salvador the most secure country in the hemisphere because Bitcoin is um, a, a money that is unconfiscatable. And that means that you're demonetizing violence and you're intolerant of violence. Uh, it's a, the birth of a new economy that favors peace, uh, peaceful exchange, because if you cannot coerce or violently extract wealth from some, somebody's property, you have to come into the conversation with something that the other person wants. And so that filters throughout the entire country. And, and that's part of the phenomenon that's going to be bringing a lot of people that might not be interested in Bitcoin, but they want to start a family. And they want to start a family in a safe place. So they'll come to El Salvador. Uh, so it has ancillary impacts throughout the entire matrix of society. Yeah, I mean, those are classical, like, liberal sort of ideas of enlightened ideas, right? That first uh, Bitcoin policy is fits under 
a bigger policy that President McKinley was just economic liberty. So first it was economic liberty and then he introduced Bitcoin. And then, of course, you need to secure the blessings of liberty, right? What good is liberty for a few people when everybody has the God-given right when you're born with that, right? So this is like the foundational sort of ideas of Western society. And we've totally forgotten that, like, the, a lot of places you see in the U.S., I won't go too much into it, you see the plunder, the, like, the, the bizarre disintegration. As President McKelly pointed out in his interview with Tucker Carlson, like, it's about by design, almost, right? So we're, we're, we're by design, creating the opposite here. We're, we're intentionally, with, with intent, like, we're, we're building uh, uh, an enlightened society where life, liberty, and property are protected. Do you think that that fire is is catching steam elsewhere in Latin America? So obviously, you know, many other nations, not just El Salvador, but do you think that they're seeing, oh wait, this is working, the rebranding of El Salvador, more people are coming, more people are moving here. Do you think that this passion for freedom is spreading? Like, do you see that happening, or is it still taking time elsewhere, elsewhere in the country? Yeah, it's definitely catching a bit, you know, in other countries in the region and around the world, obviously, in Argentina, you have a uh, who's running for president, who's uh, very Bitcoin literate, and uh, in the ethos of Bitcoin and, and the idea of separating money from state, which is one of the core pieces of what makes Bitcoin so appealing, is that for the first time you, in history you have separated money from state, and you create individual sovereignty, and this is incredibly appealing. So it's uh, the fact that it's working here is certainly a shining example. We are the shining city on the hill. We are Camelot. You know, President Bukele is, as I say, is John F. Kennedy meets Steve Jobs. Uh, and the results speak for themselves. This has been, the GDP here is going to double uh, in the next five to six years, I predict, as well as being debt free by 2030. I think obviously President Bukele is the most uh, popular leader across Latin America and every country wants him as their leader. But um, I think also, uh, as Max mentioned, he's a genius. So everybody, like you stand in front of the Mona Lisa and you're like, anybody can do that. I'm like, duh, like I, I'm a Da Vinci, right? Or everybody thinks they're Michelangelo. And President Bukele is like that. He makes it look easy, uh, but it's a lot of, um, not only hard work, but it's, you have to be born a leader like that, right? Like you have to be able to, uh, that strength of character. Like when we were here two years ago, I mean, the strength of character to withstand all of that global media onslaught, like Max and I were like the only two Bitcoiners around him and it was just like, it was like scary, like it was, it was like, you know, nerve nerve wracking for somebody like myself because I'm not a born leader like him, right? So uh, you know, you're you're being this onslaught of like you guys are gonna fail. You're you know, this is humiliating. You're gonna humiliate your entire country. This is a disaster. And you're like, I hope this works. <laughs> I'm thinking that, but he's just like so confident and able to uh, you know just lead to this point. Like everything is I told you so because he he. He saw, had the vision and he went there. What he always says is like, where El Salvador is going is to the place we want to be. So, you know, he wanted to be there and he took everybody along with him. And it's not going to be as easy for everybody else. Like all, all these people, they think it's, it's like a cargo cult, how they like think, well, he adopted Bitcoin and that's gonna make me popular, like he was. But it takes a lot more than that. It's not just like, Bitcoin is it, and like it's everything. It's all of it. it's the courage, it's the determination, it's the fortitude, it's the strength of character, and most people don't have that. Now, Max, you said that you believe GDP or El Salvador double five years debt free by 2030. Obviously, we have this coming up. Obviously, it's irrelevant in the bigger picture. El Salvador's got momentum, they're going, but obviously, we have to have it coming up, big event. Do you think that that? New cycle is going to bring so many more that El Salvadorans that are Bitcoin curious but still trying to figure it out. Do you think that we're about to have a massive wave of people on the ground figuring this out, meeting those adoption metrics, and actually coming in as a result of the halving or any other catalyst? Definitely. You know, as far as adoption goes, 
knows another way I look at adoption is awareness. You know, awareness is the beginning of adoption. And in this country, you've got 100% awareness of Bitcoin. So that's really 100% beginning to adopt Bitcoin. And it's not about the actual use at the Papusaria, uh, which of course is growing quite rapidly, but the fact that everyone is aware of Bitcoin and starts to think about separating money from state, starts to think about perfect money, starts to think about having absolutely scarce, perfect uh, money, this is, um, begins to create a lot of attraction for people around the world who are looking around and they're not really happy. We just got a delegation from, I guess I can speak out of details, you know, we got a delegation from Santa Monica, California, who arrived and they talked to us uh, about the fact that they are disheartened. They are, they, they look around and they see uh, human, uh, the human condition is deteriorating. You know, what can they do to be more like El Salvador? Now, I spent a lot of years in California. I spent a lot of years in Santa Monica. I started a company in Santa Monica. So to have this delegation come from Santa Monica into El Salvador and then ask for help, how can we be more like you guys? How can we restore optimism? How can we get rid of this institutionalized cynicism that has become the political sphere in the United States? So that tells you, I think, where we are in the cycle. And we're about to experience an enormous amount of um, influx of folks coming into the country and bringing their talent, and um, it's going to be fantastic the next five, ten years. I think it's also important to point out that El Salvador is has we we have a very very solid foundation like for that launch up, and it's really important to note that during this the bear market has been great for us because it kept all the shitcoiners out. It made our jobs easier. Um, and Bitcoiners don't ever give a fuck about bear markets, right? That's always when the, the best memes come out. So we're all having fun, right? And we're builders, so we're building. Uh, the shitcoiners run away because there's nothing to plunder. They're, they're just looking to scam people uh, desperate with FOMO. But it's important to note, like, this conference put together by, you know, Galloway and Bitfinex, right? Blank and, and Bitfinex. And you know, Galloway were the first Bitcoin Beach Wallet, where some of the first builders here building very early in 2019, 2020, yeah, 2020. So they're like building early, and then Bitfinex and, and Tether have been very, very important partners to El Salvador. Um, so this is our, this is you know, it's kind of like a, a boutique startup nation. So we get to like hand pick the people that we want here because that we know for being around, being so old as we are, <laughs> and being around forever. Um, that's why I always tell people, like, oh man, I wish I were around in 2011. I was like, then you'd be as old as I am. So uh, then maybe you wouldn't want to be around. But the, the fact that we've known, like we, we know the people that survived all the bear markets and all the, especially the boom markets. Those are the hardest ones to survive with your integrity intact. So we have, like we've individually bringing every one of those uh, sort of people and companies here. So I just think that's also built such a first mover advantage. And speaking of moats, like it's going to be hard for any other country to replicate what we have because President Kelly is like a one in 500 year sort of leader. So you have to have another one of those happen somewhere on earth. And then you have to have, um, you know, the builders. And so most people in this space are plunderers, like in the crypto space, are plunderers. And you see that in other places like Puerto Rico, I mentioned. They don't build anything, but we only want builders here. And uh, I, I think uh, we have room with builders here. Okay, so, uh, and we were 
successful. That's great. I agree. There are so many builders here. We're all optimistic. We're all optimistic about the future. Despite that, what do you think is the biggest threat, and how can we build and improve to mitigate those threats and give the best possible outcome in the future? The only threat is that, uh, like, I take a vacation and I'm not there to beat the shit out of some shit coin that shows up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, you know, I, I just believe that once people taste not only the freedom the liberty, the good times. You know, strong men create the good times. I think we're still, like, we're at that phase where it's strong men created good times. And the bad times are so just recent here, they're not going to allow the plunderers and the scammers in and, and stuff like that because they're like, dude, we just came out of 50 years of that. Uh, go plunder Puerto Rico. I keep on bringing up Puerto Rico because uh, I know a lot of shit pointers there. <laughs> Yeah, I think that, you know, the threat would be, let's have a civil war. No, we had that already. Uh, the threat would be, let's have a gang war. Oh, no, we just had that, right? So that they've come out of the threats. They've come out of the dark ages. And, and they're, it's really a sense of liberation. I mean, I remember those photos after World War II of Liberation Day, Victory in Europe Day, people in the streets kissing and dancing. And that's really the feeling you get when people have been liberated. They can actually go outside of their homes. You know, a story I heard a guy say that before Bukele, my house was too small, now my house is too big. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, before Bukele, when the gangs ran the country, we never left our house, and we never had enough room. Now, after Bukele, the gangs are gone, and nobody's home. <laughs> They're all outside. My house is too big. And so this is, these are the types of stories you hear every single day. People are, actually what's amazing is that the transformation has been so fast, one of the biggest groups of folks that are in disbelief are Salvadorans themselves, who can't believe that they're actually able to walk safely. And you see them down at the historic center and, and in other areas of the country, just luxuriating in the freedom of walking without being threatened, which is something everyone in the, the U.S. is taking for granted, and it shows, you know, we've become a bit too decadent, and it's not working in the in the U.S. In the last few moments here, too, I also want to point out the builders that are homegrown, the Salvadoran builders, and you've all seen them. We've gone to a few conferences over the past year. We went to Bitcoin 2023 in Miami, and then we went to uh, the one, uh, Pacific Bitcoin, and then we've gone. And with us, we had the Aso Bitcoin arranged the El Salvador in the Bitcoin country tourism booth, and you saw the Salvadoran builders. You saw people like K1, Tianti, Chorito Cafe. So there's a domestic startup population, a uh, uh, startup culture developing here as well. So these are first generation, like we're all, this is the early stage at 2011, 2012 of Bitcoin being back then. And the same thing is happening here. So you're starting to see uh, a startup culture in El Salvador itself. So I think that's great because I, I think it would have been uh, you know, bad news if it was just all the Westerners arriving here, you know, the Gurungos arriving here with their you know, jobs or their, their companies. But they're building stuff here as well. So that's amazing to see. So there's still more work to be done. Right, we still more things to happen. Yes, come to us, Salvador. Yeah. We need more builders here. It helps us because you know uh, the, the more the merit, the, the the more good people. If you're a bad person, you stay far away. I think don't come here. No, well, thank you guys very much. It's very encouraging to be here and see it. Not just to trust the news, but to verify that it's happening. It's here. Thank you for all you guys.